When a chest tube is placed in a patient, the responsibility to maintain and manage that device falls heavily on the nurse in charge of the patient. It is important that the nurse understand how to set up, monitor, and maintain the chest tube and drainage system that is attached. In this video, setup with the Atrium Oasis Dry Suction Water Seal Chest Drain System will be described. We will also discuss how to monitor the system to ensure that it is not damaged and is able to function properly. We will also cover exchanging the system for a new unit and how to read and document output. Once you've opened the Oasis drainage system, you will need to fill the water seal chamber with the provided sterile water. Remove the container from the back of the unit and fill the chamber from the blue port on top of the canister. There is blue dye in the canister that will color the water for visibility. When fully filled, the water should reach the 2 cm indicator line. With the water seal chamber now primed, the next step is to attach the Oasis system to the patient's chest tube. A hose is connected to the Oasis that terminates in a Christmas tree shaped adapter. That adapter should be connected to the chest tube by inserting it into the end of the tube and advancing it until the connection is tight and secure. Then, use a length of tape to help prevent the connection from accidentally being broken. Under normal circumstances, this connection will not need to be broken while the chest tube is in place, so the tape will not need to be removed at any point. Next, attach the unit to the wall suction. It should be set up appropriately, and this is explained in a separate video. When wall suction is set up, connect the suction tubing to the patient port on the suction liner and attach the opposite end of the tubing to the blue port on top of the Oasis. Turn the suction control to REG. This will deliver continuous suction to the chest tube system. When setting up a chest tube to suction, continuous suction should always be used. Do not connect chest tubes to intermittent suction. The suction control unit should be set between negative 80 and negative 100 millimeters of mercury. Obtain this setting by turning the large knob on the bottom of the unit until the needle rests within this range. The wall unit must be set between negative 80 and negative 100, but the Oasis itself will regulate the suction applied to the patient to whatever setting is set on the Oasis unit. But in order to function properly, the Oasis must receive between negative 80 and negative 100 from the wall suction. If the orange bellows aren't expanded properly, always check the wall unit first to ensure the proper amount of suction is being delivered. With suction turned on and attached to the Oasis, the chest tube should begin to drain. For this demonstration, this container will serve as the patient's pleural space and the red fluid must be removed. When the drainage container is above the level of the patient's chest, like it is here, the drainage cannot reach the Oasis container. This could be very dangerous for the patient as the fluid that is trying to be drained will be trapped in the patient's chest. When we lift the chest above the level of the drainage container, the fluid easily drains into the Oasis. Drained fluid first fills the rightmost column and then moves to the center column. To ensure that the chest tube can always drain, the Oasis must be placed below the patient. It can be placed on the floor next to the bed if you utilize the stabilizing stand on the unit, or it can be hung from the bed itself with the attached hooks. With the bed in low position and the side rail down, I like to attach the hooks to the rail and engage the stand, as the unit will lightly rest on the floor at this height. It makes it less likely that the unit will be accidentally knocked over. The nurse is expected to replace the Oasis canister in certain situations. If the container fills to the 2 liter capacity, a new Oasis system would need to be attached to the patient. If at any point the container is knocked or tipped over, the Oasis must be replaced. If you see the container get knocked over, obviously you'll know what needs to be replaced, but oftentimes the patient kicks it over accidentally when the nurse is not in the room to see it. How would you know if it's been knocked over? If you look at the drainage columns and you see fluid in the second or third columns when the previous column isn't filled to capacity, that is a clear indication that the system was knocked over and will need to be replaced as soon as possible. If the Oasis is ever cracked or damaged, change the system. Attach a new Oasis as soon as possible. To change the Oasis, simply open a new Oasis kit that can be found in the pod room. Prime the system with the provided sterile water, and then remove the tubing that is attached to the new Oasis system. You will use the tubing from the previous Oasis. You only need to replace the Oasis container, not the tubing. Earlier in this video, we demonstrated taping the connection from the Oasis tubing to the chest tube. You should never need to remove that tape or disconnect this connection. You should only be using the inline connector when exchanging Oasis units. First, clamp the tubing going from the current Oasis unit to the patient. Turn off the wall suction. Then detach the tubing at the inline connection. Insert it into the connector for the new Oasis container. Next, move the suction tubing from the old container to the new one, 
and make sure the suction settings on the new Oasis match that of the previous unit. Open the clamp going to the patient, and then turn the wall suction back to reg for continuous suction. Ensure that the bellows are inflated. Before disposing of the old Oasis, document the amount of drainage in Epic. Then put the old Oasis container in the biohazard bin. It is not intended to be emptied before disposal. If the patient has a Blake tube placed, which is the smaller gauge chest tube that is sometimes used, there should be a small adapter taped to the back of the Oasis system. Be sure to transfer that adapter to the new Oasis container. It will be needed when we near the end of treatment with this chest tube, and if it is lost, it is very difficult to obtain a new one. Once the Oasis is set up, there really isn't much that has to be done with this system, apart from monitoring it and assessing your patient. One thing, though, that does need to be done is documenting output volume at the end of every shift. Take a Sharpie marker and mark on the Oasis container how much drainage is present at the end of the shift. Draw a line and write the date and time. Then go to Epic and chart the output volume in the chest tube section. In this case, we will chart 340 milliliters of output. But what if you take over the patient and have an Oasis system that was already set up and already has fluid in it? Over the course of your shift, it continues to fill to a total of 1,050 milliliters. So do you chart 1,050 milliliters of output? No. You'll want to chart the amount that drained during your shift only. As long as the previous nurse marked the container at the end of the previous shift, this is an easy process. Take the 1,050 milliliters and subtract the 340 milliliters that were already present in the container at the beginning of your shift. This way, you'll discover 710 milliliters of that drainage fluid came out during your shift. So in Epic, chart 710 milliliters of output for your shift.